pretty much everything I buy nowadays. In the tech space, at least, has something to do with computers, and that's great for taxes, but it's also great for satisfying our morbid curiosities. And I'll be honest, I, uh... I had a lot of hope going into this one at least. You see, I've been preaching the used graphics card market for months. Videos like these have been popping up on the channel a lot recently. The cryptocurrency craze has settled, essentially. Miners are selling off in large quantities and that's dropping prices all across the board with respect to graphics cards up to about three generations back. Now, I just bought four RX 580s. I made no secret of that on Twitter. Uh, and what I'm gonna do in this video is run two of them in Crossfire. And uh, yeah, we're gonna see how that goes. This video is brought to you by Privacy.com. In a nutshell, Privacy.com allows you to purchase things online using virtual debit card numbers instead of real ones. This is useful especially if you plan on ordering from sites with questionable security standards, and it's still peace of mind for the popular online retailers like Amazon and Newegg. Privacy.com boasts the same security standards as your bank, and split key encryption ensures no single person can access your data. By the way, you can download the browser extension and have it autofill the info for any of your virtual cards like this. It's super simple, secure, and best of all, 100% free since they make money on the merchant side like that of credit card companies. Give it a try via the link below or by visiting privacy.com slash science studio for a free $5 credit toward your first purchase. The word crossfire probably triggered some of you, as would the acronym SLI, and the tech has a bad rep for a reason. Noteworthy titles have avoided adding the support altogether. And it's a shame, really, because I, I thought that I had something here in this video. So here was my goal. I, I talked about the GTX 1080 in the past and how they're going for around 300 bucks on eBay. They still are, by the way. But I was interested in pushing the value notion to the brink. At what point do you stop seeing huge returns like these? For 300 bucks, this is an insane deal. But how cheap can we go? 100 bucks? 200 bucks? We all know the $200 GTX 1070 rocks socks off of any budget build. It's a heck of a value if you're willing to take. Uh, that risk, but there aren't many other cards, used or new, that can compete at that price point. The only options in my mind involved SLI and Crossfire. This is where the RX 580s came in. Now, not hating on RX 580s individually, they're great cards, but you shouldn't go into this thinking that you can throw two RX 580s into a rig, uh, you know, pair them with a motherboard that supports Crossfire, and somehow expect to receive double the frame rate. That's just not how it works, it doesn't work that way with Nvidia and SLI, and uh, AMD is no better in this regard. So at around 100 bucks each, again, these cards are absolute steals. I should, however, note that brand new RX 570s can be had for around 150 bucks on Newegg. Again, it just depends on how risky you wanna be, but to date, I've yet to see a card I bought on eBay kick the can, gonna knock on wood there. Uh, these RX 580s in particular are four gig variants, which you'll find is plenty for most 1080p and 1440p games. At a certain point, these cards themselves can't really keep up with the bumps and textures, tessellation, and anti-aliasing, all of which eat up VRAM, and in my testing, it takes a heck of a lot to max four gigs in 1080p. You'll also see shortly why adding a second card to the equation really changes nothing with respect to my opinion on this matter. Uh, but again, you gotta wait a little for that. So to push the worst case scenario, I bumped the resolution to 1440p and in my testing, uh, ran these cards with Crossfire, both enabled and disabled. So you'll see three charts here, uh, the latter of which though will effectively remove one card from the equation. So we'll have a GTX 1080, we'll have a single RX 580. I know that comparison in and of itself is a little unfair, but we want to see under the best case scenario how close a crossfired 580 config can get to a stock GTX 1080 for about 300 bucks. So $200 all in for two 580s versus a single $300 card. I had in my mind the idea that these cards were going to somehow compete with a $300 card. Now it's going to conclude this video by saying, yeah, buy two RX 580s because they're cheaper and yeah, they'll consume more power, but uh, you'll get more performance. And that's really what most people care about at the end of the day. But uh, yeah, that wasn't the case. And I'll admit, it had been a while since I had run anything in Crossfire, so there was a bit of a learning curve. I was also surprised by just how many games lacked Crossfire support in the first place, especially considering the value proposition from the red team. I, you would think AMD would be pushing de uh, developers to you know, roll out games with Crossfire support, native Crossfire support, uh, but I just, uh, in my Steam library, all the games we typically test here on the channel, um, very few of them performed even somewhat decent with both cards active. So the first game I tested was PUBG, where the GTX 1080 obviously fared admirably. Granted, this is an NVIDIA optimized title. I expected the game to pull resources from the 580 at a slightly faster rate than it was, 
Uh, so a little disappointed there. Again, the, not really AMD's fault. Uh, and this really shouldn't be too surprising, the margin here. The two cards are in different categories, different price categories, and thus have different target markets. Uh, but what shocked me to a greater extent was how horrible this game ran with Crossfire enabled. We dropped from a low to mid 60 FPS frame rate down to a mere 42 or so after enabling it, making the game unplayable in its current state. Very choppy, we had a lot of frame skips, and uh, yeah, just a worse state overall. And I mean, come on, PUBG is one of those games you want running at as high a frame rate as possible, and you know, the mid 40s was just not going to cut it, especially when you're getting by with about 60 to 5 to 70 or so with a single card. So for this game, disable Crossfire. That doesn't make any sense, but do it because you're gonna get a better result. Which means, technically speaking, this was $100 completely wasted in this case. So either send the $200 into a used GTX 1070 or buy a single RX 580 and pocket the difference. Let's move on to a different game, shall we? How about Shadow of the Tomb Raider? In this instance, we noticed a considerable jump in frame rate using the GX12 API. Uh, now, I'm, I'm well aware that this is also technically an NVIDIA title, given the fact that it was showcased uh, and promoted by NVIDIA during one of their keynotes, uh, but this game actually favors to an extent AMD, even the DX11 API, uh, so that's something to note. My Vega 64 outperforms my GTX 1080s uh, in both DX11 and 12, but that's a different story for a different video. Uh, on average though, the single RX 580 pulled roughly 62 FPS and the Ultra preset in 1440p, and then adding a second card bumped us to uh, about 80, which is about a 30% improvement. Our 1% lowest frame rates uh, drawn reveal the similar story, by the way. Now, moving on to Fortnite, similar story to PUBG, unfortunately. The Unreal Engine doesn't support Crossfire or SLI natively uh, under really any circumstance, so we're stuck with this nearly identical frame rate with and without the second card activated. Uh, but hey, I mean, at least it's not as large a deficit as PUBG, so you don't have to manually disable Crossfire uh, when you want to play Fortnite, whereas with PUBG, you definitely want to do that because the frame rate disparity there was just abysmal with that second card active. I don't normally test Fortnite since it tends to run fairly smooth on even cheaper hardware, uh, but potential customers with SLI or Crossfire in mind should instead forego these features all together and stick to a single card. Next up is GTA 5, and I always test this one because it handles both Nvidia and AMD hardware fairly well by comparison. This time with very high settings in 1440p, the Crossfire RX 580 pair edges out a slight improvement over the single car config. Really not what I had hoped for, but it's at least something. I should also note that SLI scales significantly better in this title, so at this point the prospect of Crossfire uh, really isn't looking too bright. And GTA 5 is where I really hope this would kind of pull ahead. All the games we've tested thus far either had, you know, no bump in performance or, or just a tiny bit uh, with the setting enabled, with Crossfire enabled. So you're better off sticking with a single card in my opinion. I think it's pretty obvious. In fact, I had to hunt specifically for Crossfire optimized titles in an attempt to shift the narrative ever so slightly toward neutral ground. So games like Dirt Rally, which is AMD optimized, Dying Light, which is technically NVIDIA optimized, and the Metro 2033 and Overwatch tend to exhibit excellent scaling by these aforementioned standards, but this is cherry picking. I mean, if I wanted to point out games that run Crossfire very well, I mean, we could completely change the narrative of this video, but I'm just going by what we typically benchmark on this channel, uh, and I can tell you straight up that of all the games I have in my Steam library, well, most of which I don't even benchmark with, uh, of all of those games, about six of them, utilize the second graphics card on average maybe 20 to 30 percent of the time. Nothing really used it more than that, that second card, uh, and then most games were either having that sec second card pegged at 0% or between 0 and 10%. I was using Wattman, by the way, uh, AMD's own proprietary software to check those things. Uh, you tend to have conflicts when you install MSI Afterburner with AMD cards with the new drivers. It's kind of a convoluted thing, but uh, yeah, just sticking with AMD for all of uh, these measurements. By the way, SLI is the same story with respect to my Steam library, so this isn't me hating on AMD. Again, I just happen to be using AMD cards for Crossfire versus you know, GTX or RTX cards for SLI or NVLink, whatever you want to call that. Uh, so it, it's just it just happens to be AMD that is the subject of this video, uh, but the, the story really extends to both 
technologies because neither of them scales very well and this isn't really the fault per se of the manufacturer of the cards, the developers of the cards, but more or less the developers of the video games uh, designed to utilize the hardware at their disposal. The, uh, the APIs to an extent are also to blame, uh, but the engines ultimately are going to control how effective Crossfire and SLI are, and most of them just don't do a great job because devs don't expect most people to have two or three or four graphics cards in their systems. In fact, I, I haven't looked this up uh, recently, but I do recall on a Steam survey that a number of people using more than one graphics card or more than one GPU to be more specific was under 3%. If I'm wrong, I'll put something down here, but I'm pretty sure it was around three or under 3%, which is a very small fraction of the gaming community. And that makes sense. I mean, you can't really blame devs either, even though it is technically their fault for not including optimization with the engines they're using. They just, they don't need to because most of their consumers aren't running more than one card. So why would they go through the hassle of adding something that might cripple single card users if most of their users are in fact using just one card. So look, the reason why this video exists is somebody could go out today and buy two RX 580s or 480s or whatever, pop them into a rig and assume the best. Ignorance is bliss, right? But the truth of the matter is that nothing from what I've seen in this experiment points toward promoting SLI or Crossfire. Unless you're playing a very specific set of games and you've done a, a heck of a lot of research, it's just not worth it. Now, if you've been around a while, this should really be no surprise, right? I'd never recommend buying two of the same graphics card unless it was for very specific, say, productivity work or if you just had cash begging to be spent. That's the real truth of it. And I'll admit I wasn't this hard up about the whole ordeal until now, uh, until realizing just how piss poor PUBG handled the Crossfire config. And for two, just how other games either neglected to acknowledge the second GPU altogether or failed to utilize it past maybe 10 or 20%, which is, I mean, that's, 20% of an RX 580 is like a GT 730. Like, do you really want to spend a hundred bucks on a GT 730? That's how I see it. And it just isn't worth the money. And that brings us to the ultimate takeaway. Don't go into this thinking that Crossfire SLI is truly worth it for the average gamer, especially in a budget build, right? Where money is tight, where you're trying to just get the most out of every dollar spent. I mean, that money could be spent better on a 500 gig SSD, like a Samsung 860 Evo, or a killer case, an RGB lighting kit if you're an aesthetic person like me, or a better CPU, or an extra eight gigs of RAM assuming you're only on eight to begin with. Or how about this? Spending the saved money on a better graphics card to begin with. How about instead of buying two RX 580s, you buy a single GTX 1070 or maybe a GTX 980 Ti. I've discussed and benchmarked both in previous videos like this one right here. And while they don't always outperform a dual RX 580 setup, again, very few cases in which that happens, I can almost guarantee you that they're gonna outperform most dual RX 580 setups. That's just how it is because again, most games don't like Crossfire and SLI. That is the blatant truth of it. They're just better buys in my book, the 980 Ti and the 1070. This isn't AMD's fault per se, and I want you to, you know, include SLI in the conversation by default since the story really doesn't change much for that case either, but we've got to work with what's at our disposal. And by the way, if you're just wanting like a more affordable setup in general, an RX 580 as a standalone card is one heck of a deal for a hundred bucks you know, used or new in my opinion. And like I said earlier, all four of these RX 580s you're seeing here were used for mining. All four of them work. All four sellers disclose the fact that they were mining cards and uh, I've had no issues so far. I will say that uh, I want to close though with this. I don't want you to take anything negative regarding the RX 580 from this video. They're excellent cards for the money and better buys in my opinion over say a GTX 1060, assuming you don't have a preference for Nvidia titles or software. But buying these two cards or any card for that matter, for the purpose of, I don't know, boosting your frame rates of your entire Steam library by even 50%, which in my opinion is still pretty conservative, that is a huge stretch and a huge overstep in my book. What do you think? By the way, I still have the two RX 580s in this uh, this rig here. I'm taking them out immediately. I'm gonna put the GTX 1080 back in the system, not because, you know, I just want better frame rates overall, but because it's just generally unstable trying to game with two RX 580s. Most of the games I play, PUBG especially, it's, it's annoying having to go through, uh, you know, Crimson drivers, AMD drivers, whatever they're called now. Uh, we're using the Adrenaline drivers, I think, at this point. Um, I don't like going through and manually disabling Crossfire to play a game. I shouldn't have to do that. 
and uh, I'm not going to do that because I'm going to take them out. I'll run a single RX 580 and a more affordable rig in the future, uh, but for now, a single graphics card is going to cut it for me. Something just a little more expensive in the used market will go a long way. What do you guys think? Again, comment section below. I will be checking that out. Uh, I also, again, want to thank Privacy.com for sponsoring this video. Give this one a thumbs up if you thought it was cool. Thumbs down for the opposite. Click that red subscribe. Ugh. I'm just choking myself. I've been really sick today. You know, it's been like, it's been a really tough day. Yesterday, I, my throat was just so swollen. I couldn't even talk. So uh, yesterday, filming, it wasn't going to happen. Uh, but uh, yeah, it's been really tough to even film this video. So I apologize if I sound a little nasally or if I sound like I'm choking. <laughs> I feel like I'm choking. Uh, but uh, anyway, I appreciate you bearing with me. Click that red subscribe button. If you're feeling special, if you're feeling lucky. And I'll catch you in the next video. This is Science Studio. Thanks for benchmarking with us.